Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll start off with a new topic, which is environmental biotechnology. So we are going to study a lot of things under this. So let's get started with this video. So the first thing that we're going to study is the biotic interactions. So these are very simple things as the subject itself is very common. And that is something that we have already experienced or will experience in our coming days. So let's just talk about some of the biotic interactions. What are these? And same, we'll study about some of the abiotic, uh, abiotic interactions as well. So talking about biotic interactions, we have, uh, so basically these are interactions between living cells, which can be inter or intraspecific interactions. So these can be neutralism. So neutralism are certain uh, terms used in biotic interactions, which are something that uh, does not benefit anyone or basically something that is uh, shared between the two and the things get neutral or no, no one gets harmed or no one gets extra benefited. Also, there are some of the positive interactions under biotic interactions, which can be symbiosis or mutualism or commensalism. So a symbiosis or mutualism is something that is in which both the organisms get benefited equally and commensalism is, is one of them gets benefited, whereas the other does not get benefited, but neither gets harmed also. So this is also good. Some of the good points. I'll be explaining all of these terms in detail. So don't worry about it. So these are some of the brief stuff that I wanted to discuss before moving on to the broader part. So they're also coming or talking about some of the positive. We have some of the negative interactions as well. So these include competition. These have uh, these have predatory predator uh, relationship. These have plant herbivore herbivore relationship. These have pathogenic relationships. Uh, these are parasitism, these are emensalism. So these are something that are negative or uh, these cause harm to one or more organisms. So moving on with this. So let us talk about the inter and intraspecific competitions. So talking about the inter and intraspecific competitions, which is the negative interaction, which comes into the negative interactions. So these interactions are always involved in competitions, all right, which, which is basically due to two, region, uh, two reasons which are the limited resources and overlapping niches. So the inter competition is the competition between species. All right. So which have which some of the examples are grazing or prey for carnivores and intra competition is the competition within the species. Sorry, the inter competition is between species, whereas the inter competition is within the species. So there's a very thin line between the two. So that we need to understand. So inter is between species and inter is intra is within species. So these are some of the small differences. So intra has examples such as territorial behavior and dominance or mating. So moving on with this. So talking about the neutralism. So this is this comes under positive interactions. So we just talked about uh, positive interactions which include mutualism, symbolism, uh, also, we have commensalism, neutralism. So neutralism is the most common type of interspecific interactions. This is a positive interaction which comes under interspecific. So it's an interspecific means between species. So it's neither population. So the population is not affects the others. So the population of these species do not affect the other organisms. Also, some of the examples are the tarantulas living in desert and cactus living in desert. So these do not affect any other organisms and stay pretty much in their place. So, now with this, so talking about mutualism, mutualism or symbiosis. So mutualism is a biological interaction between two species. All right, wherein both species benefit from each other. So both are basically benefited from each other. And this term was discovered by Pyre van Bentan. And they exchange food or provide shelter or protection and they may still be able to live independent life. So in this basically two organisms share between each other, whereas where both the organisms are benefited equally. So this is a huge plus point under positive interactions. Done with this. So under mutualism, we have some more varieties which can be facultative mutualism or obligate mutualism. So facultative mutualisms are not essential for survival of either species. Individuals of each species engage in mutualism when the others is present. So these require some of them 
some of their presence or some of their partners to be in presence and they cannot survive individually so on uh, under obligate mutualism are essential for survival of one or more species so in this uh, either one or more species may survive under obligate mutualism so facultative can survive both the terms whereas obligate cannot all right so whereas uh, only one or both species can survive so this is the difference small difference and the facultative mutualism we have some of the examples such as humans and domesticated animals ants and amphids whereas obligate is termites and endosymbiotic protozoa all right so both of in under both only one species survives in this both of them survive all right where whereas both of them get benefited equally and both of them survive at the same time whereas in this both of them do not survive at the same time and whereas both of them get benefited but the survival is only to one so with this so some of the examples common examples of mutualism we have are there many different examples of mutualism relationship so which can be so how mutualism are is actually so some of the basic examples under mutualism we have is plant and microbes so which can be rhizobium in root nodules so this is the picture that we have here so this is the rhizobium that we have rhizobium bacteria in root nodules so basically the rhizobium absorbs carbohydrates and all of the essential stuffs from the roots whereas rhizobium helps in the nitrogen fixation of the root nodules so basically both of them provide equal functions to them and both of them are beneficial for each other survival also the next example that we have is the protists and the fungi which is the lichen so lichen is a combination all right so it is a mutualism or is a symbiotic organism which is formed by the combination of protist and fungi all right so lichen is one more example of mutualism so next example we have is the terrestrial plants and insects which can be pollination so so under terrestrial plants and insects so we have pollination so pollination this is the picture that we have so whereas these are the insects or any sort of bees that helps in the provision of nectar or suck nectar and helps in the pollination of particular plants moving on with this we have commensalism so talking about commensalism which is under uh, also under positive interactions so commensalism is the relationship between two species in which one species benefits from the relationship and the other is neither harmed or helped so in this only one gets benefited whereas the other is not harmed or not benefited so the other remains in a neutral state whereas the uh, whereas the other species is benefited all right so one species get benefited where the other does not so very few of such relationships exist as it is very unlikely they, uh, that the two organisms can live together without them affecting each other so so this is a very rarity whereas very whereas uh, both of them can exist and live together without affecting them each other whereas one gets benefit whereas the other does not get anything so both of them survive after all so most examples of common salvage relationships are feeding or protection which can be epiphytes so plants growing on other plants so this is something a basic example of epiphytes so epiphytes are some things which are dead decaying matter which grow on plants but they are not benefited from the plants so basically they are just grow on the plant just as a protection all right whereas plant do not receive anything also we have like another example such as epizoids so animal that live on external surface of another animal so which can be parasites so parasites are definitely not common salism because they affect the host cells as well so in this the animals that live on external surface of another animal so living on external surface of another animal does not affect that particular animal on which the animal is present so the animal the this another animal is not affected when they this particular animal lives on this animal so whereas the other the, the animal which is living inside that particular animal is benefited because it receives essential nutrients whereas the animal which boards that animal inside it does not gets benefited so moving on with this so common salism was a easy point that was something that is very simple where in simply one gets benefited whereas the other does not so talking about the predator prey relationship all right so relation in which an organism predator kills another organism which acts as food for the predator 
so predator is this thing so in this we in this picture we have the shark which uh, consumes this fish or shark whatever it is so this is the prey shark or fish is the uh, prey and this whale big whale let's just start, take this as a whale is the predator so this is the predator organism which consumes this prey for food so predator obtains food and prey population is controlled also it promotes evolution and ecological diversity all right and it has four patterns for coexistence so so it has four patterns such as stable coexistence which in which both populations remain stable so when both of them remain stable in this case it is not in this picture it is not whereas we have cyclic variation also increase and decrease in co-population co-population or seasonal effect we have erratic swings unstable population at an irregular time due to erratic environmental change and we have extension all right so under extension demise of prey population due to overhunting so sometimes due to uh, over consumption of prey due to presence of some other organisms so they become extinct all right so these are some of the patterns of predatory prey relationship so these are some of the uh, points that you might like to remember so moving on with this so we have four patterns uh, four patterns are affected by so we just talked about the four patterns which can be affected by these three patterns these three uh, effects so the which can be carrying capacity of habitat so the maximum number of individuals that can be supported by the particular ecosystem so this is the carrying capacity of habitat so the carrying capacity is very important for the pre predator relationship so carrying capacity determines a lot of it by the maximum number of individuals that can be supported by the particular ecosystem then we have reproductive rate of prey and predator so the reproductive rate of prey and predator is very important for their coexistence and also we have adaptability of predator to respond to change in prey population so how does the predator or the organism which feeds on the food adapts to the environmental changes so we have also prey prey defenses adaptations so prey defenses or the food on which the predator lapses so the prey can be some of the defenses uh, that prey inculcate inculcates in themselves are camouflage or change of color or eclipses blend with the environment as you can see the, these are some of the organisms which blend with the environment so that the predator cannot identify between the two we also have war warning colorations so this is the warning coloration of the frog so these are these indicate some of the danger signals or the predator might might get formed warned by seeing such colors or mimicry so we have some of the uh, sounds that animals or, or some other organisms may create uh, to for their safety moving on with this so this is the last part for this video i'll be continuing from here on for in the next video so talking about the pathogenic relationship so the contact between plant and pathogenic microorganism lead to the particular chain of events in plant organism so the extracellular space between cell wall and plasma membrane acts as the first battlefield between plants and pathogens all right so the extracellular space between these two membranes the cell wall and the mem plasma membrane or the nuclear membrane acts as the first battlefield between plants and the pathogens so the these are some of the important uh, pathogens that may act which can be bacteria fungi viruses or omycetes that colonize the living plant tissues and are encased in this narrow region of this initial step of infection so there are some different types of pathogens so these are which can infect the organisms so types of pathogens based on the effects are nectotrophy biotrophy hemibiotrophy so nectotrophy can be in this the plant cells are killed due to attack of pathogens any of these pathogens the bacteria fungi uh, viruses homicides uh, another we have the biotrophy so in biotrophy we have plant cells remain alive so the plant cells are not affected under the attack of pathogens and then we have hemibiotrophy so in this the plant cells initially alive and later are killed so these plant cells die eventually so initially they do not die just does do not die immediately but they take, take some time but eventually they die so these three are important pathogens based on effects so these are under pathogenic relationships so we have three types of different pathogens which can be necrotrophy necrotrophy biotrophy and 
hemibiotrophy, which can affect the pathogenic relationship. So moving, uh, so moving on, we just uh, end this video here. I'll be continuing the video from here on. So stay tuned. Uh, thank you for watching this video.